How's it guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is James and this is Dad Med Guy. Today we will be tackling diabetes. It's the one thing that we might see every day and the one thing we're trying to avoid it every day. Today we will be discussing high and low sugar, hyper or hypoglycemia. Let's discuss a little saying that I've heard. So there is cold and wet, sugar I get, hot and dry, sugar I die. What this is saying is that patients who have a low sugar typically are cold and wet. Their skin is cold and they are clammy. They're, they're profuse, profusing, they're, they're sweating and they're cold. A patient with high sugar is gonna be um, hot and dry. They're dry because the fluid has moved from inside the vessels outside of the vessels and that causes them to be dehydrated and they are typically very thirsty. So they're hot and they're dry and they're thirsty. Patients who are cold and wet with low sugar are generally very hungry. These are obviously signs that you can use if you don't have a machine, but also before you test a patient's sugar, you can also try and guess. So maybe the next time you bump into a stranger who needs help, you can be like, well, he's hot and he's dry and he's very thirsty. It's probably high sugar. The other really important note to make is that everyone's normal is different. Someone might have a sugar of three or four, that's millimoles per liter, not decimals. I think it's times 18 to get decimals. Let's say you have a three, they can be unconscious on a three or even unconscious on a four because their normal is eight or 10. You need to then give that patient sugar to then bring them up to the normal. It's important to realize that patients who are diabetic are more aware of their own disease and how to treat their own disease than we are. And so we really need to lean into their knowledge if they are awake to help us treat them. And then the same goes is that a patient might have a sugar of one or two and they're actually awake and okay. I definitely have had a patient with a sugar of two and they were probably GCS 14. They were awake, they were slightly confused, a bit like slow, but nothing out of the ordinary where that would put a diabetic on their face unconscious. When it comes to high sugar, the same applies. The thing about low sugar is that they are more important, um, they're more critical. So you only have a couple of hours to deal with a low or a hypoglycemic patient. You have a couple of days to deal with a hyperglycemic because you know that takes time to develop DK or something like that. But when it comes to low sugar, they're gonna run out of sugar and they're gonna have seizures and they're gonna die. That's a problem. So when it comes to hypoglycemia, we generally just put up an IV line and give them dextrose, 50%, 20%, whatever you have but sometimes they are combative and diabetic patients do not have the best veins. So, so IV lines become progressively difficult. You could give them glucagon, um, IM. Just remember that that is not actually sugar. It just spikes their sugar because it stimulates gluconeogenesis, uh, but it's not actually giving them sugar because their liver might be quite empty. The thing that I've learned and I've tested quite a few times is that I put dextrose in between their gums. We used to have 50% dex, so it's almost like gel jelly. And what we would do is that we'd take a syringe and we would take a jalco or a IV admin, an IV, we call them jalcos, and you take off the cannula, the plastic piece on the IV needle. You put the plastic piece on a syringe and you can put 10 or five or 10 moles of 50% dex in that, and then you can carefully insert it in between their gums. These patients who are hypoglycemic, but not quite unconscious, but not quite awake, can be very combative. And just putting a little bit of sugar in their mouth, making sure that they're swallowing, they're obviously not lying on their back and gargling. Uh, you're gonna give them a little bit of sugar at a time. And yes, this takes time. You just need to be, be a bit patient, but their sugar will slowly raise and slowly raise. You just keep adding a little bit, a little bit. Um, I know in first aid, they teach you to put like, um, jam on your finger and stick that in their mouth. I, I don't put my fingers in patients' mouths. I don't know about you. So you just take a syringe with 50% dex. It's just, it's very thick. I guess you could use um, the glucogel if you want to put it into a syringe, get a cannula off a jalco, uh, a 14 or 16 or 18 gauges big enough. You just carefully put it into the gums and you just let it work its magic. And it takes time, but it works. That's just a little trick I've learned. When it comes to hyperglycemic patients, there's not much we can do except give them some fluids, so some ringers or lactic, uh, some ringers or lactate, some ringers or some saline. We can we can try and dilute that sugar. They're also going to be dehydrated, so giving them fluid is really not a bad thing. The one thing to look out for in these patients is DKA. So they might have a acidosis. They might be hyperkalemic. These are things that you might be able to see on an ECG. Maybe, maybe not. And then I have made a video on blood gas analysis and that sort of thing. So I'll link that up here. 
just remember that insulin is quite hectic and that if you don't know how to use it or you're not sure how it works, uh, just be careful about recommending it to the patient or you taking the patient's insulin and giving it to the patient or you telling the patient to take more insulin because you may not be aware of all the stuff that's going on. So just be really careful about that. Guys, I hope you um, enjoyed this. If you have any questions or you have some ways of dealing with hyper or hypoglycemia that I haven't mentioned yet, I'd love to hear about it at the bottom and we shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.